I knew that you had to see these fun learning moments with Hank and Jan. I didn't want to just write them into an email. I want to show you the pictures and I want to share with you some of the behind the scenes. Getting to know these two and learning from them at the same time we were filming was an incredible experience. And I love all of our cast members. These two right here are truly special humans, special designers. And well, I just have a lot to share with you. So let's go. First, before I even start talking about what I learned, let me tell you why I love these two. They are the most playful, wonderful characters. The characters that you watched on Netflix is who you meet in person. This is how these individuals are, and I've really never encountered anyone quite like them. In fact, I've still never met anyone quite like them. Not only are they playful and fun-loving, but they are driven. These two took every single challenge so serious. They thought out their elements, they thought out their design, they really focused. In fact, Jordan and I made note that they were a little bit quiet during the challenges, and that is because of that drive, that focus that they had. And of course, they are cheeky as anything. Cheeky, that's actually a term I started using a bit more. No, I don't really use it. I only say that term when I'm talking about anyone in England that's being fun and playful. They're just, they're entertaining, and they're just wonderful to be around. So I feel honored that Netflix brought these two individuals into my life and even more honored that I can share these two with you. So here we go. I'm going to teach you what I learned, some bit serious, some very clever, and some a bit humorous. It's nice to have a nice mix. Episode one, that's when I started to learn from Hank and Yan. And it all really bubbled up when it came to the fact that Jordan and I had forgotten to find legs for our big, beautiful beetle. Well, if you watch, you may have noticed that we were looking for butterflies and we had found these wings and we were hoping they would be butterfly wings. But when we put the whole thing together, we realized it was a beetle. So in true kind of I don't know my style. I believe in working together. And even though we were in a competition and we didn't know each other, in fact, we'd just been introduced to each other hours earlier, uh, I saw Hank working with this material that I'd never seen before. And I saw that he was using pieces of it to make kind of some leg work. And I thought maybe I could use some other pieces in that material to make legs for my bug. So, or my insect. So I went, got off my, my place where I was designing, walked over to this man I had never really interacted with before, and asked him during this challenge that we were doing, this timed challenge, if he would share some of his coconut husk with me. Uh, I think he was floored that I asked, um, given that we are competing against each other, but he was so gracious and so wonderful. And not only did he share the husk with me, this part you didn't see on the camera, he asked, actually kind of taught me how to use it and taught me about the coconut. So this, I now I'm aware of it, but before I never even thought about it. This coconut husk grows on the outside of the coconut tree. And you see them, you know, down in Florida, I've seen this a lot, where they're removing these. And this is a beautiful element to use in design, and it really helps in sculptural work. I also was taught that you make sure you use scissors that you would cut paper with because it's going to dull any of your floral knives or your, your traditional cutters that you're going to use in your work. So it was important that I always use a scissor that, or a clipper or some kind of cutting instrument that I'm not going to be using on flowers because that would, that would dull. Uh, I also found that cold glue didn't actually hold well to this particular uh, this particular element. So coconut husk, that is the number one thing and the first thing that I learned from Hank and Yan. Well, specifically Hank in this one, but uh, Hank and Yan is a team for sure. Oh, wait, okay. I need to explain this a bit. So I'm working on my sculpture. Our stations are right next to each other. And I don't know what Hank had said. He was working on the side of his sculpture. I think I heard him falling. 
and I turn around and I see his legs in the air and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I saw what was under the kilt. Now I'm not going to explain and go into detail what was under Hank's kilt. I think he's a gentleman and that's for him. But <laughs> I turned beet red. I busted out laughing like a little schoolgirl. Uh, probably one of the funniest moments in my, of my time filming the big flower fight. Uh, so thank you very much to Hank for <laughs> giving me a once in a life experience. All right, so that's really not a big thing I learned, uh, but it is a learning moment, right? Most of all, I'm just really happy to have. Hank and Yan and their inspiration in my life. What they created was really incredible. You know, when we completed our designs and everyone was, you know, we we're, were all very critical of our own work and we're all looking around and I am pretty sure all of the teams during episode one were rooting for Hank and Yan and fully expecting Hank and Yan to take the win. What they created in episode one was actually one of my favorites from the entire series. It was beautiful. The layers were there. They had the motion and they even had that beautiful planted garden installation at the bottom. These two are so talented and yeah, they're just incredible. As I toured the country teaching workshops and classes, I have met so many of you who are struggling, overwhelmed, or afraid to take on bigger designs because you feel you can't sell what you can't design. I have heard statements like, what if I make a mistake that disappoints my client? What if a client rejects my design ideas? What if my clients don't trust me because I'm not doing big enough or good enough work? How do I make more money? How do I become a leading floral designer? I've heard all of these questions as I've toured, and they're questions I took into account as I was producing Big Dreams Floral Installation Masterclass. I have learned how vital it is to know the techniques, the step-by-step -step process, the recipes, the equipment and tools, and the challenges of what it takes to create the designs that attract large-scale luxury clients and earn the reputation that commands those higher rates. While on tour, I watched. I watched designers go from talking clients out of the designs that they were asking for simply because they were afraid and didn't know where to start. All the way to these same designers having that fearless confidence that they need to significantly up their game to create those Pinterest and Instagram worthy installations that customers rave about and that exponentially grow their businesses. The success that I witnessed these designers have while on tour led me to the inspiration to create Big Dreams, the Floral Installation Masterclass, and do it completely virtual. All right, are you ready to hear what else I've learned from Hank and Yan? Hunches. This I learned on episode two. I promise I'm not going episode by episode, but these are just a couple things that I thought were really interesting. So in episode two, we were tasked to do the, the fashion challenge. That's the one where Jordan and I made the beautiful burlesque style dress. And Hank and Jan were doing this more kind of modern costume take on Adam and Eve. And they had all these tea leaves and they were taking the tea leaves and using a hole puncher to punch hundreds, so many, circular hole punch holes with this, what's this hole puncher? Did I say hole puncher enough? Then they took cold glue and they cold glued the hole punched tea leaves to their snake, which it held beautifully. It had such a great scaled effect. I was actually really, really impressed with this technique. And this is something I've taken back with me. I haven't used it yet, but I have planned on it in future designs. Using a hole punch on leaves is very simple and something I hadn't thought about previously. 
And I'm so happy that once again, my station was next to Hank and Yan so that I could learn from them. Not only learn from them, the chatter and just the playfulness in between the shooting of the big flower fight was a lot of fun. You can see here how they use that hole punch. Now, they actually use two different kinds of leaves. They use a tea leaf and then they use a red cordyline. And that's what created the difference in color. If you look there, you can see the snake, how it just kind of winds up the body form. And they have the green leaves where they took those hole punches and they have the cordyline to give those spots because this snake was not just any snake, it was a python. And so it had those spots on it. It was such a clever, clever design. And being able to be there in the dome, learning from these two was such a unique experience. These two have extensive floristry experience and this experience leads to some unconventional use of tools. Learning from them is sure to have you thinking way outside the box and inspiring your creativity in a whole new way. I can't wait to share with you what they will be teaching during the Big Dreams Floral Installation Masterclass. While we were filming the Big Flower Fight, I couldn't even imagine some of the creative things that they came up with. So be on the lookout. It's going to be fun to see. All right. I still have to share another element that I learned from Hank and Jan. The Hebe. This lesson I learned, it was on episode seven, and it's this little plant, this little shrubby plant. It's an evergreen, it's called Hebe. And this particular plant is what Hank and Jan chose to do the face of their alien. And what I thought was so interesting was how easy it was to work with, where some plants really have to be manipulated a little bit and it's hard to keep them together. Uh, with these plants, when they were placing them, because they are small and their roots are nice and tight, these plants went in and it looked like this was this beautiful finished piece even though it was all these tiny individual plants. Uh, I had never seen Hebe before. I'd never worked with Hebe before they, they started using it here. And I was really taken with it. So I've actually ordered some Hebe for the installation workshop that we're doing. We've been working on a virtual installation workshop so that you can learn some of these large scale installations at home. And Hebe is one of those things that I'm gonna be working into that. In fact, I actually learned a lot of plants that are great use in conjunction with fresh flowers. And a lot of times these plants, they're exceptional in value because their cost can be very similar to our cut flowers, only they can be used over and over again, which works really great, especially if you're doing corporate work or you're bouncing between wedding work and corporate work. Here is the look at the alien. So you can see all these little tiny plants that made up the face of this alien. I am still so taken with it. Uh, and you really couldn't get the full aspect of this particular design in the show. This is another favorite of mine that I feel like did not get nearly enough chatter. This design was designed both inside and outside. So you can see this beautiful area around the, the alien. And then they completely covered the interior. So you could walk underneath the alien and see the ground that was lifted up. It was really a spectacular experience. And I wish I'd videoed walking around and really seeing that because I want to show everyone just how cool this was. And I'm so grateful for Hank and Yan that in the middle of these, these competitions, they would take the time to stop and explain what they're doing and share these products that many of us on the set didn't know. These two were by far the most experienced in building these large scale grand designs. So there you have it. The three things I learned from working with Hank and Yan plus a fourth just for fun, you know, what might be under that kilt?